In this video, I want to talk about the InstaTheme Visual Editor. The most important feature that InstaTheme has to offer is the InstaTheme Visual Editor. InstaTheme takes pride of this unique feature as it not only enables you to create and edit contents with ease, it also allows you to have full control of what you would like to add into your contents according to your needs and preferences without having to hire a designer or a developer to do it for you as you can completely do it yourself. Gone are the days that you need to spend time, money, and effort just to make your own post and pages look stunning. With InstaTheme, you are empowered on editing contents while being able to watch how it looks when you go live directly from the working space. Now this tutorial assumes that you are already running InstaTheme as your site's template. The first thing we want to do is log into the back end of your WordPress website. To start working with the InstaTheme Visual Editor, you need to add a new post or page or edit an existing page or post. So let's go to the left navigation bar and we are going to add a page by scrolling over pages and then going to add new. When the page or post editor loads, you should see a blue button that says launch InstaTheme Visual Editor. This button is just below the page or post title. Let's click on launch InstaTheme Visual Editor. Notice that there is a pop-up error message stating that you need to enter a title and save this page at least as a draft first. So we want to click OK and give this page a name. Once we have named the page, we want to click Save Draft. Once the draft has been saved, we want to click Launch InstaTheme Visual Editor. Please remember that if you are only editing a page or existing post, then the pop-up box will not show up. It will only show up for new pages that do not have a title and have never been saved as a draft or a published copy. So now let's click on Launch InstaTheme Visual Editor. Once the button has been clicked, you will be redirected to a page that looks similar to this one. On the topmost area of the InstaTheme Visual Editor are options that will aid you throughout the process of adding and editing content to your pages. First you have your flex and snap mode. This button allows you to switch from flex to snap mode. Flex mode enables you to freely drag and drop page elements to your editor's content area and at the same time resize it according to your preferences. The snap mode however is limited on resizing capabilities but allows you to freely adjust the order of your elements. Page settings. This will display a box that contains settings where you can add a page title, enable or disable the display of the title, and comments on the page you're creating or editing. Then you have View Page. When clicked, this option will open up a new tab or window that displays how the page would look live that you're currently working on. Save Changes. This button will save and update the most recent changes that you've made to the content on your page or post. Then there's the X or Close button. When clicked, this button will close the InstaTheme Visual Editor and it will take you back to the default WordPress page or post editor. Next, we're going to talk about adding, editing, and deleting droppable elements. As of the moment, InstaTheme offers 16 droppable elements that you can drag and drop to the workspace according to your liking when creating and editing content. To add an element to the workspace, you'd simply go to the droppable element section and you drag the element you would like to use from the droppable elements tab onto the workspace. When the element has been dropped onto the workspace, this brings out an option to add and set up the contents for that particular element. Some of the elements automatically display the pop-up window with the options while others require that the edit button be clicked, which is located at the bottom right corner of the element. To rearrange the order of the elements, you need to hover your mouse over the top center of the element. When you do this, it should trigger the display of a small gray box. Click and hold your mouse onto it and drag it to the position and where you want it to be placed. 
To resize an element, hover your mouse over to the dash border of the element you would like to resize. You want to make sure that you're able to see a double-headed arrow cursor to start resizing the element. Make sure that you are on the flex mode when resizing. Lastly, to delete an element, just click on the close icon located at the top right corner of the element. You should see a pop-up that asks you if you're sure you want to delete this element. If you want to delete it, simply click yes. Next, we're going to go through each of the droppable elements. The first one is text. The text element allows you to add content to your page or post. It can be used when rendering the body of an article. It looks and works like the default WordPress page or post editor. If you're dragging this element over, you'd simply click Edit, and you can begin adding your content. Once you're done adding and editing text contents, hit the Update button to save your changes. The next draggable element is your title. The title element is best used when you're adding headings to your content. Now that we have dragged the title over, let's click Edit. Your title text would go here. Add text stroke. Turning this switch on will enable the effect to add an outline surrounding each character of your heading. Next you have stroke color. This field would only take effect if the add text stroke is enabled. It accepts the hexadecimal color code of what you would like to use as an outline for your text. Then you have the add text shadow. When this switch is turned on, it adds a shadow effect to your content. And last, you have shadow color. Here you can enter the hexadecimal color code of the color you would like to use for your text shadow effect. Once you are done adding and setting up the style for your heading, click the Update button to save your changes. Then you have the image droppable element. You would use this element to add images to your content. It opens up the Media Uploader window by default, which you can use to upload an image from your local computer by clicking Upload Files. Or if you already have images that were previously uploaded to your site, you can click Media Library and use one of those. Once you have decided on an image, you'd click the image, scroll over to the right lower hand corner and click Use Image. To customize the image that was recently added, you simply scroll over the image and click Edit. This should then open up a pop-up that gives you some options on how to customize the image according to your needs and preferences. The first option is Image Position. You can choose out of three options where you would like to position the image that you have just recently added. The options are Left, Center, and Right. Then you have your link URL. This field is only applicable if you would like to take the user to a specific page when they click on the image. Open link in a new window. This is only applicable if you have set a URL on the link URL field here. The open link in a new window, you would turn this switch to yes to open the link in a new tab or a window. If you would like to open it in the same page, then leave the settings to its default value, which is no. Caption. If you would like to add a caption to the image that you have just recently added, then this field is where you should enter the content. Caption text color. Using the built-in color picker, select the color you would like the caption text to be displayed in. Caption box color. Choose the color of the box using the color picker to be used as the background of your caption box. Caption border color. This is where you would use the color picker to choose the border color that will outline the caption box. And last you have caption box drop shadow. This adds an extra touch to your image and the caption by turning the switch on and adding a nice shadow effect. Once you're done setting up the options for your image, Save the changes by clicking the Update button. However, if you would like to replace the uploaded image with a new one, you'd simply click the Change Image button. 
Once you're all set, click Update, and you're done. The next droppable element is video. Adding videos to pages and posts have never been easier with this video element of InstaTheme. It offers the option to add self-hosted videos with an additional option to add alternatives WebM and OGG format to provide support to more browsers and devices. Once you've dragged and dropped your video element, you'll see that you have a few different options. The first one is the video MP4 URL. This is where you can enter the exact URL where your video is hosted or located. Then you have your alternative video OGG and WebM URLs. The fields are extra options so that your video will be rendered and supported in more browsers and devices. Then you have your aspect ratio. This option allows you to choose the appropriate ratio of the video you are adding relevant to what screen it is best viewed in. Then you have video size. Here you can enter the equivalent number to the width in pixels where the video will be displayed. Image Splash URL Enter the exact URL of the image you would like to use as a splash or cover image of the video. Then you have the Autoplay video. This switch is turned on if you would like to enable the video to start automatically when the page loads. And last you have the Disable Control option. Turn this switch on if you do not want users to see the video controls. Once you're through setting up the video and its corresponding settings, click Update to save your changes. Next you have your columns. This element is best used if you would like to render your content in columns. It automatically offers you different columns to choose to suit your needs. Dropping it on the workspace will automatically load different columns you can choose from. So let's click on the Edit button. This allows you to select how many columns you want displayed by clicking on the appropriate setting. Once you decide how you want your columns, you then click Update. Then you have your divider column. Let's click on Edit. This element is best used to set divisions between the different elements that you've already added on your site. The divider column gives you four different options. The first one is Divider Line Width. You can drag the slider control to set how wide you would like the divider to be. The minimum divider width is 50% of the total content width and the maximum is 100%. Then you have Divider Line Style. Select from the drop-down the line style of the divider. Currently there are four styles you can choose from. You have Solid, Dashed, Dotted, and Double. Divider Line Thickness. You can drag the slider control to set how thick you want the line of your divider to be in pixels. The minimum line thickness is 1 pixel and the maximum you can set is 20 pixels. And last you have the divider line color. You can use a built-in color picker to select what color you want the divider line to be displayed. Once you're all done with your changes, simply click Update. The button element. Adding buttons to your site has never been as easy as using the droppable button element. Dropping it into the workspace will automatically display the options you can customize for the button display. So let's quickly go through those options. The first one is button position. You have left, center, and right. These three options allow you to decide how you want to position your button. Button size. You can choose the size of your button to be displayed from four pre-made button sizes available. You have many, small, normal, and large. Button color. Currently the button elements support seven pre-made colors for you to select from. You have gray, blue, light blue, green, orange, red, and black. 
Button text. This is where you would enter the label of the button. Button URL. The complete URL of the page you would like the user to be redirected to once they click on the button should be entered here. Tick the check box button below if you want the URL to be open in a new window. Otherwise, leave it as it is and the link will open in the same window. Once you're done with your changes, click update and your button has been added. Then you have the box element. The box element is the perfect solution if you are fond of adding emphasis to contents by putting them inside a box or for whatever purpose a well-designed box would serve you best. Let's click edit to see the options available for the box element. The first one is your box color. Using the color picker, select which color you would like to use as the background of your box. Box width. You can drag the slide control to set up how wide you need your box to be. Border style. You can choose the style of the box border from the drop down menu. It gives you five different options. You have solid, dashed, dotted, double, and of course none. Border color. Select the color of how you would like the border to be displayed. Note that this option is applicable to all border styles except none. Border thickness. Drag the slider control to set up the thickness of your box border. The minimum border thickness allowed is one pixel if the style is not set to none. Rounded box radius. Drag and slide the control to enable the rounded corners of your box. You can set it as low as 0 and as high as 50. Add a drop shadow. Turn this switch on to add an extra shadow effect to the box. Once you're done with all of your changes, click update. The HTML element. The HTML element is the best choice if you would like to add extra HTML code to your content. It only has one field you need to fill in, which is the text area where the HTML code you want to add should go. Once you've added your code, you'd simply click Update and you're all set. Then you have iframe. This element is the perfect solution for users who would like to add an iframe to their page or post. So let's go over the different options iframe URL. This is where you enter the complete URL of the iframe. iframe width. The number entered in this field will determine how wide in pixels the iframe will be displayed on this page or post. iframe height. The number entered in this field will determine the height of the iframe in pixels. Display scroller. Turn this switch on if you would like to enable the display of a scroller in the iframe. This is particularly useful if the iframe content is longer than the height of the iframe set. Invisible iframe. This switch enables you to render the iframe hidden for whatever cases this would serve this option best. By default, this switch is turned off. When you are done adding and setting up the iframe element, click the update button to save your changes. YouTube. This element is designed to support adding YouTube videos to your page or post with ease and convenience. There are four different options for your YouTube element. YouTube video URL. Enter in this field the complete URL of the video from YouTube. Then you have a video size option. The value entered in this field will determine how wide the video is when it's displayed in pixels. Autoplay video. Turn this switch on to start the video automatically when the page loads. Disable controls. Turn this switch on to disable the controls when viewing the video. 
Once all of the settings have been finalized for your YouTube video element, click Update to save your changes. Vimeo. This element is especially designed for users who are hosting their videos on Vimeo. And this element gives you three different options. The first option is for your video URL. Enter the complete Vimeo video URL in this field. Then you have your video size. The value entered in this field will determine the display width of the video in pixels. And last you have your audio play video. Turn this switch on to enable the automatic start of the video when this page or post loads. Once the settings for this element have been finalized, click the update button to save your changes. Then you have your comment element. This element enables the use of the Facebook comment feature to this page or post. It's important to note that this element will only work if you have entered a valid Facebook app ID in the InstaTheme Advanced Settings. The Notice element. This element enables you to add notices to your pages or posts that can vary from a warning, important information, error, danger, etc. The first field, which is very similar to the default WordPress page or post editor, is where you would enter the content of your notice. Then you have the notice type. This drop-down has four options. Warning, info, error, slash danger, or success. Each notice has its own specific styling. After you have set up everything for this element, click Update to save your changes. Then you have the Note option. This element is only accessible and available for users that have an administrator role. This can be used as a reminder, for instance, on what is left to do or other important notes that can be viewed the next time you get back to the edit page. The only option you're given initially is to add the title of your notes element. Once you have filled this out, you'd simply click update to save this information. You can start adding notes, editing previous entries, and deleting notes no longer needed when you go to the live page while keeping your login status as an administrator. And finally, we have the insert graphics button. This button enables you to select and use any of the pre-made graphics from the six graphic types. You have bullets, arrows, badges, underlines, highlights, and buttons. You can drag and drop images right into the workspace. It's important to remember that this only works when you're in flex mode. Furthermore, the only options available for you to set or customize for these graphic images is resizing and dragging them into specific positions. And you can also replace them with different images using the edit button on the lower right hand corner. Furthermore, the only options available for you to set or customize these graphic images is to resize them or drag them into specific positions and you can also replace them with different images using the edit button on the lower right hand corner. This concludes the tutorial on InstaThemes Visual Editor.